Welcome to Prayer for America. I'm Walter Zagarevich, and next to me is... Nina Zagarevich. Nice to see you all. And uh, we are joined by Marcy and Walter Labaki and Tony and Marge Abram. And we want to welcome every one of you. And as we begin this broadcast, this Prayer for America, live on Facebook, via Zoom, we want to encourage you to contact your friends, contact your relatives, and have them join us as we pray for America and the nations, as well as for your needs. So if you have a specific need you want us to include, write us right now. You can write me through Messenger, or you could quickly just jot it down on Facebook, and we will pray for you. If we get it after the broadcast, we will still pray for you. But we want to welcome you. We want you to invite others to do that as we launch into this uh, prayer for America. And America does need prayer. Amen. We are uh, in California. The uh, Abrams are in Alabama, and the Labakis are in Ohio, and America needs prayer all over. Uh, California needs prayer uh, very specifically for the fires that are raging all over this state. Uh, there are other needs that we want to bring up in prayer today, but we are praying for revival in America. We, pray, we are praying for a spiritual awakening in America. Uh, the Bible says in uh, the book of the prophet Haggai, it says, um, thus says the Lord of hosts once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations that they shall come to the desire of all nations, to Jesus. So God's desire is to bring people to Jesus, and sometimes shakings must happen. Sometimes things must occur in order to wake people up. In other words, for God's plans and purposes to be fulfilled, people sometimes need to be awakened, shaken up a little bit. And uh, we want revival, we want a move of God, but sometimes those things come after certain events happened, after uh, in the New Testament, after persecution had come to the church, there was great revival that spread to the regions beyond and to the nation. So we don't want persecution, we don't want uh, to go the hard way, but if we don't go the easy way, sometimes God must allow a shaking. Well, there is a certain amount of shaking of different types occurring around the world. We've got prayer requests from Pastor Deepak in uh, Nepal. They've had uh, some huge landslides where people have uh, villages have been covered by mud and people are suffering. We know of the hurricanes that uh, are in the Gulf of Mexico and well not too far from the Abrams there um, in Alabama but uh, they've uh, some people in Haiti, some people in the Dominican Republic have had uh, damage to their homes. Some have lost their lives. We want to pray for the people in Haiti as well as Dominican Republic. We want to pray for Belarus today. Uh, Belarus is in the midst of crisis right now. They've had elections that are disputed, and there are many people that are upset, and many people are demonstrating, and there is a certain amount of uh, unrest. Uh, unrest in the nation. We want God's will to be done there. We want God's kingdom uh, to go forth and God's kingdom to be established. We want the church to have full freedom for preaching of the gospel, whether it be Belarus or Ukraine or Russia or the United States of America. So we do want to, and we will pray for Belarus today as well as for other nations. So if you have a specific prayer request, do join us, do write us, and we will join, um, we will bring that as we join together in prayer before the Lord. Um, and uh, Sister Marcy, you're right there, ready to go. <laughs> what do you Amen. have to say to you today? I have something to say that you already started, and that is that God is calling the church, the body of Christ, to wake up, to rise up. And the Bible says in Ephesians, wake, awake up, you who are sleeping, rise from the dead, and Christ or the anointed one, or the anointing. Christ is anointing. The anointed one will give you light, will give you the way that you should go, will give you the vision. And you know, when we, we read the Bible in Genesis chapter one, 
in the beginning, before we pray, let's establish a little foundation here. In the beginning is God. Who is God? The Word. So we can say in the beginning is the Word. And we've had Word churches, Word preachers declaring the Word for centuries, for a couple centuries, at least for at least two centuries that I am well aware of. Uh, the Word, the Word, the Word, the Word. And yet, we are not seeing that revival that we are wanting to see because of the declara declaration of the word. Now, as you read Genesis 1, verses 1 to 31, God said, let there be light, let there be animals, let there be land, let there be sea, let there be fruits producing uh, seed within themselves. And then in Genesis chapter 2, verses 5 to 7, it says, and there, was, there were no plants or nothing was growing because there was no one, God did not send the rain because there was no one to till the ground. And here is what I will read what I wrote down. All has been declared, but it is manifested the minute that the man stepped into the garden. God put the man in the garden, the Bible says, and then everything began to grow and to produce. God proclaimed and declared and God prepared a place for you. I'm speaking to the body of Christ tonight. You who are people of God, you have been preparing, you have been um, staying in the anointing, you have been seeking God, you've been listening to the word, you're turning from one TV channel to another to hear all the preachers that declare the word, you have got tapes, you've got videos, you've got DV, DVDs, everything, and you're listening and listening and listening, and you're so built in the word, and tonight, I believe that God is speaking to you. We can declare all we want, we declare the word, but nothing happens until we arise until there was a man in the garden. See, I believe that there are churches in villages, in towns, in small places, there are churches waiting for the pastor to arrive there. You say, well, there's no one saved there because you're not there. Because you need to arrive there as that man arrived in the garden of Eden then everything began to grow. You arrive in that town where there is no church, where there isn't a full gospel church, where there isn't believing for healings and deliverances and salvations. God is calling you to that place. Arise and go there into that garden where God prepared for you. And as you arise and go, then God will send the rain, his anointing, his blessing, and all the word that has been declared there. There's word that has been declared there, but there's no man to tend to it, not, no man to, to weed it, no man to keep it clean. As the Bible says, there, there was no one to tend to the garden. So therefore, God did not send the rain. God will send the rain, and then you will begin to see the results. The same thing in your life. You were speaking, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed. And Jesus looked in this man and said, arise, if you want to get healed, arise and start walking the promise. Start acting the promise. Start acting what you're believing for. And then you will begin to see it. So tonight, I believe, or this morning, whenever you're watching daytime, when you are watching this, God wants you to arise and to begin to be the one that God called you to be. There are so many of you that are called of God, but you're always looking at someone else. Old oh, Walter Zagarevich is called, Nina is called, Tony's called, Marge is called, but me, who am I? You are called. You are called of God. There's a garden that God put every man into, and you have to tend to your own garden. You cannot tend to someone else's garden. Because when we miss the mark, it's called sin. Like I always say, when God, when we create a car, when the manufacturers create a car, they create it to go down the road, the middle of the road, not into the ditch, not into the rocks, not into the trees. But when the car says, I want to go into someone, I want to be a bulldozer. So it's going to go over there into the bushes. It's, it's destroying itself. It cannot fulfill its, its um, commission or whatever God commanded it to do. And so when we, when we compare ourselves and we try to fulfill Walter's vision, Nina's vision, someone else's vision, your pastor's vision, you're never going to, you're going to be like that car, bashed up, broken up and sitting there in the mud. 
because you went off the road. Sinning is not only oh, oh, smoking and drinking. Sinning is missing the mark, missing the purpose of God for your life. That's what sin is. And when you God has placed in front of you, and you know it, you know it, you know what you need to do. Tend to that garden. Get into that garden. God will send the rain. God will send the anointing. And you will begin to see growth like you've never thought it will grow. Because you are in your place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you know, adding to what Sister Marcy has just said, you know, we began uh, praying for America we, uh, several weeks ago. In fact, uh, I think it's so well over a month ago. And at first we did one week of prayer and fasting, and then we've done Sunday night. And uh, we apologized last Sunday night. We had some technical difficulties. I was only able to get out for a few minutes. But I want to say this, that some of you would say, well, wait a minute, you already prayed. And what about this? What about that? You know, when you pray, it's just like Sister Marcia was saying, you are planting. When you are planting, you plant a seed outside there in your garden. You don't get the tomatoes the next day. I mean, you got to give time for that to grow. Now, there are, there is a putting the faith into action, like Sister Marcy said, and there is that moment, and we have to do that. But remember also that we have planted seeds. And I remember Brother Tony said, and I felt the same thing, that there is a breaking already starting to happen. And that is happening. You know, it's just like a uh, woman who is expecting. When she conceives, she knows that she has conceived. But you and I do not know that. We do not see that. It's nine months later we see that child. But so it is when you plant that seed, when you pray, things are happening and things have been put into motion. We just got through doing a road th a trip through like 10 states. And as we drove through, we prayed for these states, uh, the state of Nevada, the state of Arizona, the state of Utah, the state of Idaho, state of Montana, Wyoming, um, uh, Wyoming uh, uh, and, Oregon. Uh, and Oregon and Washington and California. So we were praying and we we're praying, you, see, you are putting seeds and you we need to declare the lordship of jesus christ not only over our lives but over our regions over the cities where we live over the states that we live in those places where we set our foot we need to uh, invite the lordship the governance of god and say your kingdom come lord jesus your will be done right here in this area in this region in my life in my family in in this in my city, my state, my country. Mm -hmm. And if you are watching us in another country, uh, we are specifically uh, focusing on America, but we are also praying for the nations. We know that you can do the same thing in your nation for your uh, people, for your city, for your nation, for your state or province. And so uh, we want to invite our, our friends in Canada, welcome our friends in Canada, our friends in different parts of the world that are joining us. Uh, we've had people join us from, uh, from Japan, from from, uh, various parts of Asia, from uh, Ukraine, and where it's still nighttime, and from uh, uh, some of you are going to watch us uh, in the coming hours and days. And we just want to welcome you and let you know that we are praying for you. And so, Brother Tony, would you take it at this point? Continuing with what uh, Sister Marcy was talking about, a man, God, the scripture comes to my mind where God sought for a man to fill up that edge, hedge and to stand in the gap. And uh, I know a lot of ministers, and not only ministers, God actually, once he saves us, he doesn't save us to just make heaven. He saves us that we may share what he has done for us with others. And praying for the nations is one of the things we need to do, but we need to share and plant and plant that testimony plant that word now i know a lot of people they'll say oh i can't do it i remember when god called me i was uh, 19 years old i was in the army i was just turning 20 uh in about a week or two so i should say i was 20 years old and he called me and I said, Lord, I can't do it. I, I, I can't speak before people. I can't do this. But God says you can. And he brought me to the scripture. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. So the next, and now I, now I know listening to uh, Walter and listening to Marcy uh, already uh, this evening where we are, 
that uh, why the Lord told me just a few minutes before uh, we, we came online, uh, print this out. I want to read it. It's from my website, uh, from under thoughts. I've got some different links, and this one is thoughts. Just remember, the next time you feel like God cannot use you, just remember this. Remember these people from this, the Bible. Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses had a stuttering problem. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy, they were just too young. David had an affair and was a murderer. Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. <laughs> That's one for the books. Jonah, Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job was bankrupt. John the Baptist ate bugs. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep while praying. Martha worried about everything. Mary Magdalene was demon possessed. The Samaritan woman was divorced more than once. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer and Lazarus was dead. No more excuses now. God's waiting to use you and your full potential. And that full potential is the Holy Spirit that's in you. That full potential is that living word of God. God's word is not dead. It's alive. And that is the New Testament is God's perfect will for yours and my life. Yes. Is that right, Sister Amen. Mark? Amen. Amen. <laughs> How true that is. Uh, Brother Walter, Sister Nina, Brother Walter, and Marcy. Uh, I was, I was uh, just thinking about the week of prayer we had and then this time of prayer. We've been praying for our nation. Of course, in our devotions, we're all praying for our nation. We're praying in our separate devotions. But also, I just I was just thinking of the scripture in James that says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So as we are praying and seeking God, it it causes another translation says makes lots of things happen. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes lots of things happen. And you know, I, I a few years ago I was reading Romans, the last chapter. And uh, I thought, well, look at the verse I came across in Romans, chapter 16, and then verse 10. It says, Paul's giving his salutations and greetings. And he says, salute Herodias, and my kinsman. Salute, and this is verse 7, salute Andronicus and Justice, Junia, excuse me, my kinsman and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the, among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. And I thought about that. I said, my, they must have been praying for the apostle Paul. He was a, the man that wrote over half of the New Testament. And I thought, my, they must have been praying for their relative, the apostle Paul. They heard of the persecutions that he was causing the Christians and so forth, and they they were praying for him. And I thought, how we need to pray as we pray. God is hearing our prayers, and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man does avail much. But isn't this tremendous? When I came across it, it really blessed me because they were in Christ before the Apostle Paul, and I've never <laughs> heard anyone 
bring that out. Have you ever heard anyone bring that out? I've never heard it. But the Lord just let me see it. And I thought they had to be praying for him and how we need to pray for one another and the body of Christ because God wants to use us all as Brother it, Tony said. It, it was just like my mother, first one in the family. And she prayed for the family until everyone was saved on both sides. So the Apostle Paul had family too that prayed for him. Yeah, obviously. You know, if you think, you know, somebody witnessed to Billy Graham, somebody witnessed to Morris Rill, somebody witnessed to Tony Abram, somebody witnessed to Marcy Lamaki, and to me, someone did what God had told them to do. They were obedient to the call. And they didn't know what the person that, uh, for example, Morris Rill, I think he was like 14 years old in a Jewish orphanage, uh, that that sister that worked in that orphanage, she didn't know he was going to become an evangelist. She just preached to this or shared Jesus, the love of Jesus, with this young boy in an orphanage. Uh, little did she know that God was going to save him and use him as a worldwide evangelist. Well, uh, that's true of other people, too. Uh, we, we just see a little boy or we just see a little whatever. And, and yet God... This potential for that is unbelievable. And Brother Tony had just listed a number of, uh, we could say, defects or, <laughs> uh, uh, or problems in, in so many different lives whom God used. Because you see, God does not see you the way you are, but the way he will make you to be. He sees that potential in you. He sees your heart. He sees a heart that he can mold. He sees a heart that he can use. He sees a heart of humility that will humble himself or herself before him, say, Lord, I can't do it in my strength, but with you all things are possible. So uh, remember, with Christ all things are possible. You may be discouraged. You know, uh, we drove through various states and we saw people some people i mean they're walking with masks out in the middle of nowhere i don't know why but uh, uh i mean some people are fearful i guess and of course you know i understand when you get close to people or you're inside uh in a store or a restaurant or what have you but but you know some people are just in fear and uh we want to encourage you not to fear god is with us god is working and god is more powerful than that virus or any virus and we will bring up in prayer those that have been affected by the virus or are being affected right now and we know several people friends of uh tony and march and we also know and uh, and others uh, and we want to lift them up before the Lord in prayer. But with God, all things are possible. You know, I just, um, as, as we're saying that, I just want to read something uh, that was written once on at uh, Madison Square Garden. They had this uh, written in big letters. Impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. Uh, impossible is not a declaration, it's a dare. Impossible is a potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. That was said by the great boxer Muhammad Ali. Well, you know, uh, it, it's, it, Jesus makes the impossible possible. And uh, when you see a wall, when you see a challenge, don't just succumb to that and say, oh, I can't do it. I'm, I'm going to give up. No, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. So you take that as a dare. You take that as a challenge because with God, all things are possible. And he will give you that breakthrough through that wall or over that mm -hmm. wall. And uh, mountains can be moved. Now, it doesn't have to be physical mountains, mm -hmm. but whatever those mountains, those problems, those needs, the sickness may be, a financial need, God, with God, all things are possible. Jesus yeah. has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we want to encourage you to believe, to trust God. Uh, and we're going to pray uh, uh, right now. But uh, if you have a need and you want to share with, uh, with us, write us, let us know. But let's pray right now, those that are in need. Father, in the name of Jesus yes. Christ, we're talking about your power, your ability. And Lord, there are people that have been praying and maybe they haven't seen the answer yet. Or they're discouraged, they're disappointed. Mm -hmm. But Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, help them to see not with physical eyes, but with spiritual eyes that which you are doing. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come against every sickness, 
and disease that may have beset those who are hearing the sound of my voice right now, whether it be by COVID-19 uh, or whether it be by some other sickness or disease or flu or cold or, or paralysis, whatever, or arthritis, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I bring these to you and I send your word of healing to them, yes. touch them, deliver them yes. out of destruction and heal them right now. Heal that cold, heal that flu, heal them uh, from that virus. We rebuke that virus. We rebuke that uh, COVID-19 virus and we command you to die and come out of that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for healing, that your healing balm will just come over from the top of the head to the very soles of their feet, healing, encouraging. Some of you are just sensing a warmth coming through your body. It is the power of God touching you right now. Receive healing. Just say, Lord, I receive my healing from my sight. I receive the healing of my ears. I receive the healing of my stomach. I receive healing of my joints. I receive healing of uh, every matter of sickness and disease in my body. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke that COVID-19 virus. Come out in Jesus' name and be healed, my brother. Be healed, my sister. Receive God's healing power in your life right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I know that there are friends that join us from different parts of the world, including Latin America, Cuba, Central America, the Caribbean. And we want to, I just want to pray in Spanish for you. Padre, en el nombre de Jesús, estoy orando por mis amigos, mis hermanos de habla hispana, tócalos en el nombre de Jesucristo. Si alguno de ellos está sufriendo del virus COVID-19, sánalo, echamos fuera todo virus. Ahora mismo, en este instante en el nombre de Jesucristo Señor, sánalos en el nombre de Jesús y sana otras enfermedades cualquiera que fuera, hecho fuera esa enfermedad, sana en el nombre de Jesús, amén amén and amén, well God bless you, praise God, the Lord is moving, God is touching lives Nina, do you have anything you want to share? Well I thought maybe um, the Lord impressed upon me that there's people that have suffered losses from COVID-19. Mm. And um, as I was praying this morning, um, the Lord brought me to 2 Kings chapter 6, and it's talking about the prophets when they came with Elisha to the Jordan River to build, to cut down trees. And one of the servants of Elisha, when he was a prophet as well, he was chopping down a tree and the ax, the head of his ax fell off into the water. And he was like, he was freaked out. He said, oh no, this is a borrowed ax. And what am I gonna do? And Elisha says, you know what, where did, you, where did it fall? And he says, right here, you know, he showed him. And Elisha threw in a stick and there, this ax, the ax, the head of the ax came to the surface. An iron, it says iron ax head came to the surface. It was a miracle, the guy. And so Elisha says, pick it up. So he grabbed and went with it. And so the Lord just wanted me to say that he is a God of recovery. And once you recover, you he will restore what you have lost. So there's no near to no need to fear, but he is in charge. It's a miracle. This axe was iron. It floated. So no matter what you think is an obstacle in your life, if you lost, if you can't pay your mortgage, if you can't pay business fees, whatever it is, God says, no worries. I'm your God. I'm a God of miracles. Look what I did for the servant of Elisha. Um, I. I will restore, and I, you will be recovered. You will Why recover. Why don't you pray for those that need restoration right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for every person out there who, who has set, had a setback financially. In Jesus' name, yes. we believe your word that you bless. You command a blessing upon your children, and that no evil shall befall them, Lord. And we know that you will restore to them a hundredfold when they give to you, when you, they tithe and they believe and they step out in faith to do your will and to do your word. Father, we just bless them. We anoint them in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Uh, well, we haven't heard from Brother Walter Lavaki. Would you greet the people? Well, we gr greet everybody and we love you so you can hear the word of God and we pray for you and we pray that God can unite the churches. Yes. God can unite the, uh, what they call it, Christians and they can stand 
strong and in the Lord. And I believe God is going to bless and love one another. Don't curse one another, just love. And I believe God is going to bless you and God is going to direct you where to use in different places by the Holy Spirit. And this is what God speaking to our heart to do His will. And special we pray for our country, for our president, special for this convention that's coming. Let's pray God can give the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister Marcy, would you pray? I, I feel that there are pastors who, you know, are maybe discouraged. Maybe discouraged is not necessarily the right word. But, um, you know, laws and rules are being changed left and right. Churches being told, okay, you can go ahead and meet. No, you cannot meet. Yes, you can have 100 people or 250 people. Now you can only have 25 and things of this nature. It causes just a, you know, this, this instability. And I, I just feel that pastors, pastors need prayer and encouragement. Mm -hmm. Marcia, would you pray for mm -hmm. pastors? That's, that's right on, Walter. I'm just uh, really um, excited how the Lord is, uh, is uh, ministering tonight. Uh, I just wanted to read this verse in Isaiah 60 in the Amplified Bible. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Mm -hmm. Rise to a new life. Yeah. Pastors, rise to a new life. Don't let circumstances, as Brother Walter said, depress you, press you down. But arise, shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord, the glory of God. If you look at that meaning, what glory means is all the manifestation of all that God is, the, all, his light, his joy, his power, his almighty, he cannot fail. God is peace. God is everything that we need, his power. Hallelujah. He'll give you results. He'll give you a tremendous ministry. Can I just give a word here? Ezekiel was a prophet of God. And we always say, oh, God, lead me. Well, is God led Ezekiel, all right. God took Ezekiel, the Bible says, in the spirit, he led him into a valley of dry bones. Why did he lead him into that valley of dry bones? Because God knew that there is a, a God in Ezekiel, prophetic anointing in Ezekiel, that he can handle it. The reason God has you as pastor in these bad times, in this COVID time, let's call it that way. Why didn't God put Apostle Paul here? Why didn't he put Mary, mother, the mother of Jesus, or somebody else, or somebody else? No, he called you because he knows you can handle it. He knows that you're anointed. He knows you can stand up. But you need, we need to encourage one another. Stand up. You can do it. God called Noah to build the ark because God knew what was in Noah. God knows what he put inside of you. And he knows you can handle it. So when God leads us to a valley of dry bones, don't worry about those valley of dry bones because even like Ezekiel said, God said, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, thou knowest, O Lord. In other words, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to live, but you know. And God that is in you, allow him to speak through you. Allow him to work through you. In the name of Jesus, we command the spirit of depression to leave and we command the spirit of life to flow through your entire soul, spirit, and body, and the church. In Jesus' name, give new direction, new ideas for the pastors, Lord, who have been limited and hindered in the ministry. Show them a way out that they will be even greater, more powerful to win more souls. Instead of sitting in a building with four walls, they will go out and begin to win the souls that are crying out for help. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. 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 Well, um, Brother Tony, is there something that the Lord is laying on your heart? Well, I had this uh, earlier in the week, and uh, I was doing uh, one of my 15-minute uh, uh, missionary stories, and uh, it kind of something went wrong te technically with the, uh, with the uh, telecast or whatever we call it, broadcast. And... Uh, I also had it on my heart today because we're praying. 
And there's no distance in prayer. Psalms 107, 20 says, God sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their, their destruction. And I remember back uh, in 1969, I believe it was, we were in Chile. We were in the city of uh, Arica. That's right on the border of, Bo of Peru in the north. And it hadn't rained there, they told me, for almost 50 years. And they got irrigation from the mountains and so forth. But there was a man going through the park. We, it was the first night of the crusade. We had perhaps 1,000 or 1,500 people gathered that first night. And he was discouraged. And he saw the crowd, so he stopped. And the, God had the right message for him to hear because he had a 15 year old son. 200 clicks away, 200 kilometers, or about 120 miles away in the country of Peru, uh, just across the border, not that far, filled with cancer, no hope. And he was so discouraged because he was his only son. And But here he saw the crowd, and he listened, and uh, something came into his heart. Of course, it was the Holy Spirit. We know what it was. Began to deal with him. And when I gave the invitation, perhaps 150, a couple hundred people came forward to receive Christ. And he prayed the sinner's prayer. And after I had encouraged the people a little bit afterwards, and their names and addresses were taken by the workers. And then, then he just remained at the front because we were using the city park and we had a big plat long platform. And he stood there. And I felt led that night to call people for the first night to encourage others that had tumors, growths, or cancer. Well, there was a number of people came forward. He stood and he watched because he saw his neighbor come forward. And he didn't particularly like his neighbor, but she had a huge growth or probably a cancer. She looked like she was uh, uh, pregnant. And uh, he's watching. And as we prayed, he watched that tumor, that growth go down. And Marge was snapping pictures. She had a picture of that woman standing there before, doing, and at the end when she had to grab her skirt because it was falling, falling down because the, everything. And this man, he's watching. And, of course, the Lord directs you uh, uh, when you stand in the gap. When you're trying to do what God wants you, you say the right words. And I says, there's no distance in prayer. Uh, God sent his word and he healed them, delivered them from destruction. And this man thought, what God did for my neighbor as mean as she was, is uh, he can do it for my son. Well, now this is what's wonderful about prayer. So as we prayed, we sent the word. In the name of Jesus Christ. And there's power in that name. There's no other name like that name. Well, three days went by. And he was in the convert class during the day. He was in the two nights. And then the third night at, during the crusade, here he comes running to the front. The crowds were much bigger by now. And he was waving this paper. It was a telegram. And uh, he's talking to me about, 100 miles an hour in Spanish, and I said, Mas despacio, por favor, uh, because my Spanish wasn't, well, it's not that good now, but uh, for understanding, it was even worse at that time. And uh, I said, I told him to slow down, slow down, and he just handed me the telegram, and I read it, and I said, get up here on this platform, and I had him read it to the people. It was from the doctors in the hospital in Peru, 200 kilometers away. Here he has this telegram from the hospital saying, you can come and get your son because we don't understand it, but our medicine has worked. He, there's no more cancer. Well, we know it wasn't, it wasn't uh, the medicine. It was prayer. God sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from the destruction. So God, as we pray for America, as we pray for the world, as we pray for all the nations and the people, God can do anything. 
I, I, I heard, Walter, you mention our friend of over 50 years, uh, Dr. Ken Metters and his wife, Nancy, and now the, and, their, and their son. Uh, they, they all have that damnable, out of the very pits of hell virus that has been attacking people all over the world. They've come down with it. But there is power in the name of Jesus. And we have prayed for them, and we're believing God for them. And as we pray for everybody, as you prayed earlier, thank God God hears. Matter of fact, God hears before while we're while we're talking, before we speak, God hears us. And while we're yet talking about it, he's working. And we believe that through these, I believe God's, God put this on your heart to contact uh, Sister Marcy and myself to join you. I believe God's given you and your wife this vision to get on and use every means. And I know that over the time with, on the YouTube and uh, people watching on Facebook, your friends, Marcy friends, my, my friends, and they're sharing it. Thousands and thousands of people are hearing this. And it's a message of hope. And hope is the basket that holds faith. And faith is flowing into people. And I believe that in the days, the weeks, the years, many things are going to happen that's going to glorify God. Amen. So we, when we pray, we're sending the word. And with God, all things are possible. Amen. Well, God has the to, to many lives, the healing of many around the world. I personally have seen this. And uh, Brother Tony, would you just very specifically right now pray for those with, with COVID or, or being affected by it, the uh, uh, Dr. Ken Metters, Pastor Ben in Oregon, there are others, and there are other needs that have been brought to us of pastors and various needs. I don't have all the names in front of me, but would you pray uh, for healing right now? And you know, we, we have prayed even before... We had that week of uh, prayer and fasting. We have prayed for people that uh, had the virus that God healed. Within hours, they, 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 they contacted us back and say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Amen. So, uh, and we're going to pray for you. It looks like you got a bit of the sniffles. Yeah, I, you know, a lot of smoke here in California. All outside. And it, it, whether you want it or not, a little bit seeps into the house as well. And uh, so it's, um, yeah, we can't see very far outside <laughs> right now. We Last year, I know how it was in, in Edmonton, and uh, I, I had the same thing. Uh, it, yeah, okay. We're going to pray for all, for all the folks there. Our Father and our God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know, Lord, there's no distance in prayer, that, Lord, our faith that you've given us, Lord, your word that you have given us, the Holy Spirit that is within us. Lord, we send the word. We send it to Walder. Lord, you see the allergy from that smoke, and we see the 100,000 or more people that are now homeless or at least had to evacuate their homes in California. Lord, there's many saints of God, so we're praying for everyone, Lord, saint and sinner, because you love the saint and sinner the same. And in the name of Jesus, cause either the rains to begin to fall, even if it's not season for rain, spring the rains, stop, help those workers, those firemen, protect them, and then cause the weather to come down in temperature in the name of Jesus. And Lord, not only there, there's other parts of the world that are suffering destruction and floods and Lord in the, you see there in the, in, in uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Lord, uh, Texas, you're going to be hit by that uh, double whammy. I pray in the name of Jesus, uh, spare the people and stop the power of those storms in Jesus name. 
we speak peace to them. And Lord, we pray for those who have had the virus, for our good friend Ken and Nancy and Kenny, Lord, uh, and that you see how they've labored for almost 60 years in the ministry. And Lord, in Jesus' name, as we pray for them, we pray for people uh, all over, Ben up there in the Northwest, Lord, and, and others uh, in the name of Jesus uh, around the world. Uh, we curse the very roots, the very life of that virus in the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, devil, you are defeated. Uh, you are defeated by the power of the living Christ. Uh, and in the name of Jesus, may every bit of that virus uh, die in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, you see all those on, uh, on the machines keeping them alive. Uh, and Lord, what a way to die suffocating. Uh, and Lord, so many are, are, are suffocating. We ask in Jesus' name to heal, to cause them to be able to breathe. And the pneumonia that is caused by the virus, go in Jesus' name and let your Holy Spirit move. And Lord, we don't want to forget anyone. But I, if we do, you do not, Lord. You know each one. You know both saint and sinner. And we send the word. We send the word because you love them, Father. We agree. There are six of us here on Zoom. But Lord, there are many that are agreeing with us. And you said if two agree, it would be done. And in the name of Jesus, across not only North America, but across South America, across the, uh, Africa, across Europe, across Asia, across the islands of the sea. Lord, even the Antarctic, if there's people there in Greenland, there in Iceland, Lord, in Jesus' name, let the healing power of Jesus flood those areas. And Lord, protect the workers. Protect those workers in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I just raise my hands and I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Bless Brother Walter and Nina and the vision they have. And I pray for Marcy and Walter. Bless them and their families. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who would like to lead a prayer for the nations? You know, there are needs, and I mentioned Belarus, Nepal. Uh, there are needs, of course, in the, the island of Española, which is uh, Haiti and uh, Dominican Republic, the southern part of the U.S. here in California. Of course, Brother Tony has just prayed that the weather would change here. We need rain. It is not the season of rain, but God can change that, and we are believing for God to give us miracle rain to dampen uh, to bring down the smoke, to stop the fires, and to uh, give us a break in the weather here. We need that desperately. So we're believing God for that. But who would like to lead uh, for the nations, a prayer for the nations? Just lead out. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We thank you, Lord. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Lord, you hold all things in your hands. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring the nations to you. Lord, we bring North and South America, Canada and the U.S. to you. We have been praying, Father, for this nation and for Canada. And Lord, we pray for the United Kingdom. We pray, Father, for Australia and New Zealand. We pray for the islands of the sea. Father, we pray for the Falklands, the Scilly Isles, the Shetland Isles, all these isles, Lord, pertaining to Britain and the Commonwealth and the United Kingdom. 
Father, we bring them to you. We bring Europe and Asia and Eastern Europe, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, you, the nations need the gospel, Lord, and we thank you for those that are preaching the gospel. Father, those that are going forth in your name, taking the banner of the cross, Lord, and going into areas that are difficult, Father. The mission missionaries, those that have gone and left their home and lands and have gone in the name of Jesus. We pray for them, Lord. We pray, oh God, for the nations, the islands of the sea, Father. Father, we pray in Jesus' name for all the 50 states of America, for all of the nations, Father, and, and all of their territories. Father, in Jesus' name, we bring presidents and vice presidents, pr premiers, prime ministers. Lord, we bring all of these to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we bring all of the leaders of the nations, Father, in Jesus' name, those dictators, Father, in Jesus' name, we bring them to you that they will receive the gospel, Father. You said to pray for our enemies, and we pray for them, Father. Those are, that are the enemies of the cross of Christ, we bring them to you, Father, in Jesus' name. And we know you're hearing, Lord, as we join together in prayer and faith. Father, you're hearing our prayers in Jesus' name, and we thank you for it. Thank you for this time of prayer and waiting on you, Father. Just minister to these, and we send your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. His wife, his, their family. Lord God, we <laughs> Every for the vice president, his family. We pray for those who are in their cabinet, and Lord, we pray for all those the advisors around them that they would give uh, the president godly advice. And Lord God, we pray that this nation would be led towards God and towards righteousness. Yeah. We pray for the protection of the life of the president and uh, his family, as well as the vice president and his family. We pray for every senator. We pray for every congressperson. Lord, we pray for those of the Supreme Court, that you would give them help. And Lord, we pray that they would seek you and your guidance, your wisdom, your direction, and that they would uh, bring up the principles of righteousness, and that, they, that righteousness would once again be lifted up in this nation. We pray for spiritual awakening in this nation. Father, for spiritual visitation from the White House to the smallest, poorest house of this nation. Lord, may it be touched by the power of God and the power of Jesus Christ. May the love of God permeate the White House. May the love of God permeate every house, every home in this nation, every governor's mansion, every uh, mayor's office, every uh, uh, every uh, person who is in government in this uni these United States of America. We pray that they would bow their knees before God and seek the uh, the guidance of God and the uh, strength of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, you said every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord over the United States of America. We declare that Jesus Christ is Lord over every state of the union, every territory of the United States of America. Uh, Lord God, over every island of the sea, over Canada, over Mexico, over Central America, America, over South America, over Africa, East, West, North, South Africa, Lord God, over the Middle East, over Central Asia, over Asia, over Europe, over Eastern, Western Europe, Northern Europe, Southern Europe, Italy, Spain, uh, Portugal, Lord, uh, Germany, uh, awaken the Netherlands, oh God, uh, uh, Northern Europe, Lord, uh, uh, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would move and remain in Ukraine and Belarus. We lift up Belarus to you. There is unrest. There, there, is a, there are difficulties in that nation right now. We say your kingdom come, your will be done. May there be full freedom for the preaching of the gospel. May the churches have uh, step up in 
this hour, praying and counseling and, and, and doing what is right in this hour. And Lord God, we pray for a spiritual visitation to that nation. Lord God, you have used many Belarusian pastors to evangelize Russia and other parts of the world. Lord, visit that nation one more time. Strengthen the church, oh God. Use your church, oh God, in this hour of difficulty to be a shining light uh, in that nation. Father God, we lift up Japan. Lord, we pray that the nation of the rising sun, that the sun of righteousness will arise in that nation, and that many Japanese will be saved and carry the gospel of Jesus Christ forth to other parts of Asia and to other parts of the world. And Father God, we pray for those that are missionaries in uh, Japan. Bless them, uh, Lord God. Uh, bless the snipes. Uh, bless them on their 52nd anniversary. Lord God, use them mightily in Japan. Use, oh God, other uh, the Japanese pastors there who are leading your word. Lord, we bless the, uh, the, uh, the Taiwan. We bless the pastors, the leaders there. Lord God, we pray that you would send the mighty move of God again to that island and that from the island of Taiwan, many nations will be touched, uh, that China will be touched. We pray for Hong Kong. We pray for the church in Hong Kong. Lord God, we pray for the church in China. Lord, there are many who are suffering because of the tremendous flooding in China. We pray that the suffering would be encouraged and strengthened and be provided for. We pray that those that need rescuing will be rescued quickly. We pray, oh God, for the same in, in areas of Haiti and uh, the Dominican Republic being flooded and also Puerto Rico and southern states that may be hit by the Lord. We commend that uh, to, that those uh, hurricanes just turn around, go back out to sea, and not damage the southern coast of this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we do pray for of the nation of Nepal. Lord, there are many who are suffering from the landslides that they've had there. People, villages that have been damaged greatly, uh, uh, just covered by mud from the landslides. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones that you would encourage them and give them peace. We pray for the salvation of many of that nation. We pray for Pastor Deepak and other pastors and leaders, uh, uh, Keisha and others who are leading and guiding and the, the flock there in that nation. Lord, raise up many more more uh, uh, leaders in that nation to carry forth the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only throughout Nepal, but surrounding nations, including India, including China, Tibet, in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you that you are working in the nations of the world. And Father, we lift up California again. Lord, we uh, have these raging fires, but we pray that the fire of the Holy Spirit yeah. would set spark to the lives of believers in this nation and that revival would come to this state. Lord God, we know that uh, there are many people suffering because of the fires. And as Brother Tony has prayed, we pray and agree for the protection of the firefighters and first responders. We pray for those people that have lost homes or are uh, displaced right now because of the fires. Uh, Lord, we pray that they would be provided for. We pray for wisdom to the governor, for others who are handling these situations right now. But above all, we pray for your uh, grace. We pray for your visitation. We pray, oh God, that you would send showers of blessing, mm -hmm. both physical showers uh, and, and spiritual showers. We need them, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and Lord God, we pray for uh, Portland, Oregon. There has been rioting now for, I believe, like 86 or 87 days. Father, yes, we pray that the peace of God would enter the hearts of people there. We bind the principalities, the rulers of darkness yes. of this age that is causing yes, people to cause yes. this upheaval, to cause this rioting, yes. to cause this. The, we bind the spirit of anarchy. We bind the spirit of murder. We bind the spirit of destruction. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we release the Holy Spirit to work in Portland, Oregon, and through throughout the state of Oregon. Father God, bring revival to that uh, to that area. Father God, we thank you for what has happened in the in the visit of uh 
and the people getting saved, the youth coming to Christ. But Lord, we need much more of that, not yes. only in Portland, but in Seattle, in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, New York, yes. uh, uh, Chicago. Father, we lift up these cities to you. We need revival. Father, we do lift up our neighbors to the north, uh, Canada. Lord, yes. send a mighty move of God to Canada. Lord, they've sent missionaries to the nations of the world, but today they need a visitation of God also in their nation. Mm -hmm. Father, send revival, send awakening, spiritual awakening to the nation of Canada in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, uh, uh, the state of Alaska, the state of Hawaii, are, are, uh, the states uh, and regions of the United States that are far away, we ask that you send revival to those regions in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we declare your lordship we say your kingdom come your will be done in this nation in the state of california in every state of the union in the name of jesus christ father we just pray for breakthrough we pray for breakthrough we pray that lord uh, that uh, blind eyes blind spiritual eyes would come open yeah. and that people would see and understand the light of the gospel and come to the lordship, to, I mean, to the salvation that is offered to them in the person of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we again lift up pastors and leaders, give them boldness, give them protection, give them guidance, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, we're you know, can I share for a little bit here? Okay. God is putting it in my heart over and over again. There are multitudes of miracles that have happened. And then there are multitudes of you who are watching and you need a miracle. Hallelujah. Receive that word that has been declared by Tony, by Marge, by, by Walter, in prayer, receive those miracles. Just say, I'm it. I need a miracle of healing. It's impossible for me to live without a miracle. That's when you need it. And that's, that's why you qualify for a miracle. Uh, you don't qualify for a miracle if you don't have an impossible need. But because it's impossible in your life to get healthy, to get finances, to get a house that may be burned, to get restored financially and every other way, family restoration, miracles for, for uh, marriage restoration, miracles to restore the church, which you were pastoring and things have happened. Miracle, miracles of every kind, wherever there's an impossibility, you qualify for a miracle. So apply tonight to the throne of God for that miracle. Like you apply for the money that's available in, you know, in order to help your little business. You qualify for this, apply for the miracle. Every one of you, every, I see so many, I see so many people that need healings, healings that need deliverance from sickness, just multitudes and multitudes receive it right now. Stretch your hand forth towards this uh, towards your camera or, or your TV, wherever you're watching this, your, your phone or your iPad or your computer, stretch your hand forth and say, in the name of Jesus, I receive that miracle of healing. The Lord wants to heal you like he has healed Israel. Israel, were, they were not sick as they walked towards the promised land. They were not even in the promised land. We have Jesus who died on the cross and he nailed all our sins and sicknesses to that cross. Now, in the name of Jesus, receive full and complete healing. The Lord said, I will heal my people. I will heal my people tonight. Receive it now in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. 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 Mm. Amen. Brother Tony, do you have anything else you want to mm. add? This is the hour. As Sister Marcy prayed, the scripture that today is the day of salvation. The salvation of God isn't just our spirit. It's for the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. And so 
I believe that whatever the need is, if we can believe, Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Not just some things, but all things. And God, many times, is giving, offering to us, but we don't receive it. It's time to receive, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, um, the verse that came to my mind was, um, um, I am alert and active and watching over my word to perform it. So he is alert. God is active. And um, we just need to pray his word. We just, he's watching. He's seeing us. He wants to give us what we're praying for. He wants us to be in his will. He wants, like a good father, he wants to bless you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to give you a, a whole body. Uh, other verse that comes to me is that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives within us. And the same spirit of Christ lives within us. Nothing else can reign in there. That's right. No disease can reign in my body when the spirit of God lives within me. So accept your healing tonight. There is nothing impossible with him. Believe Amen. and you will receive. Amen. 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 Just to mark, do you have anything else to say in closing? I don't think you're so. talking to Margie or to me. No, I'll say to Marge. Uh, Marge? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I just, I often hear people say the presence of the Lord is coming or is here, but you know, he lives within us. And so how could he ever leave us? He's with us. And as we declare the word of the Lord, that he is here, he is within me, we can speak to our bodies and even speak and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to get an order, body. I command you to be well. We can speak this word into our own bodies and spirits and minds. And so I believe that that is faith when we confess the word of the Lord and speak it. And of course, we speak it to hear, hear it ourselves, and also so the devil hears it and he has to flee in the name of Jesus. So we, we need to just declare it. Let us continue to declare that he is Lord over our spirits, minds, and bodies, and we will have deliverance, and we will be delivered. In, Amen. In, in our devotions before we go to bed at night, uh, we've been doing this for the last few weeks. Uh, we do the whole 91st Psalm. Uh, we don't have it quite all memorized, but uh, uh, one of us will be reading, the other one will be quoting along with it. And it seems that every time we read it, or say it it just kind of builds up our inner man praise the lord that's it's what, like in the holy ghost yes amen that's what the word will do and you know um in, in mark 16 jesus said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so some of you that are watching us will say well i can't go to church right now they will not lay hands on me right now because of COVID and so on you can lay hands on yourself you can lay hands on your child you can lay hands on whatever it is in your home that needs uh, uh, uh that needs attention you know the laying on of hands yes it's wonderful if a pastor could be there and lay hands on you but you can lay your own hands on yourself and on amen uh, these guys will follow those that believe. That means you who believe. You are believing. So just do it in the name of Jesus. Uh, Brother Walter. And I, and I see some uh, right away. What, my Walter, yes. I see some, but right now when you were talking about that, I see some grandmas looking on a wall. You know how they put up pictures of their sons and their daughter-in-laws and their grandchildren. And God is saying, just go up to that wall and lay hands on that picture. When I went to the Bahamas, I, and the Lord told me, he said, pray distance prayers. Pray long distance prayers as you're standing. So I'm sitting there in, a, in the pew ready to preach. And as I was called up behind the pulpit, the Lord just kept on saying, don't preach until you do this, until you obey me. Because I sort of didn't want to do this. You know, the long distance prayers, that's kind of hard to get people healed, we think. We think we've got to lay hands on them. But I got up behind the pulpit and I obeyed the Lord. And the pastor's father-in-law was healed. He's on the other end of the island. And I knew his name. 
and I know exactly where he lives. I was in his house. And I prayed right there, and I said, all of the church, agree with me in the name of Jesus, be healed. And he was healed. He put his crutches away. He put his wheelchair away. And now he could take care of himself. And he was 90 years old, and he was healed by the mighty hand of God. So lay hands on those pictures. Lay hands on anything that's your children's uh, clothing or whatever, and just pray for them. And God will heal them. That's how you, Paul said, here's uh, prayer cl cloths, you know, that he anointed. Well, anoint their bed, anoint their pillow. Just, just yeah. anoint the door, anoint your house. And when they walk in, they're going to like, one day I said, I was, I was taking a shower and I was singing the praises of the Lord. I was just singing so loud. It was just so powerful in me. I was singing, praising the Lord. And then I was making dinner our, and my son came home and he ran upstairs to take a shower and he ran into my shower for, for some reason. He went into that shower and when he came downstairs after he dressed up, he said, mom, you have no idea what happened to me. I said, what happened to you? He said, when I jumped into your shower, I heard a song in my spirit and I started to sing. Do you see what I mean? When we, when we, we can do these things, we can anoint our voice, anoints these walls and these doors and everything. We, need, we can do that in the name of the Lord and believe that those children will be touched by, by those things that we speak in our houses and don't wonder what happened. Well, the Lord is speaking to them. Hallelujah. Uh, I was going to say uh, something before uh, Brother Walter says something. Brother Walter, your first language is uh, Ukrainian or Polish? <laughs> I is you, you. What is it? Oh, it used to be. Oh, oh, Walter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> is it Polish my, or, or, or Ukrainian? My dad is from Belarus. 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 Oh, okay. Why, why don't you, you, you know, there's people, uh, there's Russians, Ukrainians, Polish, and uh, like from my, my back of my family on my mom's side, Slovenian. And uh, as a kid, I knew Serbian and Croatian and uh, Slovenian. <laughs> and uh, so why don't you, why don't you say something to our friends in uh, Belarus tonight? <laughs> It's Belarus. Just I can't speak with Belarus. No, you can't. He speaks Ukrainian. He doesn't even Ukraine. speak Russian. Oh, then speak, then speak Ukrainian. Ukra say, bless yes. us in in Ukrainian tonight. I know, just Ukrainian. Why yes, you want to? Just speak, speak to the people to to bless them in in Ukrainian. I was born in Slovit. I was born in Slovit. I'm very happy to be listened чуєте це слово, яке ми молимо за вас, і я вірю, що Господь благодя благословить вас. Амінь. Дуже добре, добре, брати. Амінь. Praise God. Amen. He said a word of blessing there in Ukrainian and we are very thankful. We're very thankful for a, a missionary evangelist Tony Marjeber, missionary evangelist uh, Marcy Walsh Labaki. Walter, this is Nina. <laughs> God richly bless you until you again. God bless you. Amen.